D.C. In reality, as Tip O'Neill would declare for Reagan budgets, is probably dead on arrival. After all, the spendaholics are now in charge of the House. Joining me now on the Daily Ledger page 5 beat from Nashville, Tennessee, economic analyst, hedge fund manager, and contributor to Forbes and other major business publications, Thomas Landstreet. Uh, Tom, Russell Vaught, this acting budget director who came out and spoke on behalf of the President of the United States today, uh, made more sense out of anybody who's been talking numbers in Washington, D.C. for many, many, many years to me, he's essentially saying, hey, listen, we can't keep spending like drunken sailors. No offense to, to sailors out there. Uh, but that we have to get our, our fiscal house in order. And the GOP, I think, made a fundamental mistake with these tax cuts. They lowered taxes, great, but they increased spending, and you can't do that. And so the president is now saying, hey, we have to reverse that. Yeah, I wish they'd done it last year when they had a majority in the House, Graham. It would have been a lot easier. And honestly, when you look at these numbers, his current year calls for a trillion dollars in deficit spending. By the way, that's about equal to Obama's first year in office. And every year after that, it got a little better. So it really honestly isn't that great. We've got a rise in interest expense of hundreds of billions of dollars from the Federal Reserve, as you know. We've increased defense spending, which, by the way, I'm not against. Healthcare spending's back on the rise again. Yep. But the problem, again, is Social Security and Medicare. We have to deal with those unfunded liabilities or else we're just playing uh, we're just playing around the edges, honestly. Right. And, and it really, it's the Congress's job to deal with that. But I don't hear anybody in Congress talking about the third rail. They're not willing to touch the third rail of government. That's uh, Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security, and um, all the other issues that are part of this unfunded liability of $220 trillion. Now, speaking of spending, the American people apparently weren't afraid to open up their pocketbooks in uh, the first month of 2019. Well, again, um, it's hard to look at one month, especially with noise related to the government shutdown and bad weather. You kind of have to look at two months, Graham. I'm really looking forward to March. A variety of things that stick out. First off, the Amazon effect. In other words, December Christmas selling is not quite like it used to be. There's a big pull forward effect, if you will, from online sales, which will occur earlier. So December, you know, there's a lot of noise. There's also, again, January is the least important month of the year. Then the Atlanta Fed, which worries me, cut their expectations for first quarter GDP growth on this number. Mm. So something scares me. In the Merrill Lynch credit card data is weak. We have to see March before we can get excited, Graham, honestly, if you ask me. Well, imagine this. Imagine if you had a candidate for president who ran on the platform of breaking up technology companies in this country. That is not a joke. It's Elizabeth Warren. I think she must want campaign contributions from these companies, Graham. She might be angry at Tim Apple, Tim Cook, for sitting <laughs> next to the, to the president or cozying up to him. Honestly, with her, I bet it's extortion. What's funny is, why don't we break up the government monopoly? Yeah. I mean, a monopoly on, on uh, education, public education, where only 44% of students graduate with a degree. So why don't we look inward? Why don't we look at the government monopoly first? It's a joke. And what about Exxon? They own gas stations and they produce oil. I think no matter who you are, Republican or Democrat, you're going to scoff at that one. And I hope she gets more press for it because it makes her look stupid, in my opinion. Well, when you look inward, we ought to look at term limits. And uh, I, one of the persons that I would look at for term limits would be Pocahontas, for sure. Thomas, thank you. Coming up next, for Democrat voters in 